What's good with y'all niggas? What's good? It's motherfucking Quake here. You feel me? Here to wake y'all motherfuckers up. And today we doing Bible doctrine exposed, nigga. Cause y'all y'all niggas be on some pseudo shit. If you believe in this book, you need to wake the fuck up. I don't be like using that word, but you just need to become more conscious or become more aware of what uh book you're believing in. You feel me? What what you're dedicating your whole fucking life to. Now let's start. Let's start the shit, nigga. All right. Presented time. Mmm, the shit loading slow as fuck. Bible doctrine exposed. Let's go, nigga. Now, what is the Bible? The Bible is a fictitious book created by Europeans, specifically Greeks and Romans, after traveling to Egypt, which is y'all know is fucking commit, and becoming inspired by the African way of life and spiritual system. Right? In other words, it's it's an allegorical book which teaches parables using fictitious characters such as Jesus and other prophets which people so desperately try to make real. So to sum up everything I just said, it was made by Europeans, specifically Greeks and Romans, but it was inspired by you originally. Now, an example of this would be Heru or Horus in the comparison between him and Jesus. You feel me? But we're going to get into that. But, you know, the Greeks and Romans, with them uh, being pedophiles and things of that sort, they added shit to the book. Uh, proof that it has Greco-Roman authorship and that they were inspired by Egyptians, but added their own weirdo doctrines to the shit. Now, on the left, you have baby Horus or baby Heru and his mother Isis or Set. And on the right, you have motherfucking Mary and baby motherfucking Jesus. They copying you, nigga. It's copy paste. Copy paste. But here's the thing though. When, when they copy from you, they paste shit, but they put their own shit into it. You feel me? It has Greco Roman authorship. The Roman Piso family. Let's look at this article real quick, family. You feel me? Just let's, let's look at the motherfucking article. Look at the motherfucking article real quick. Bro. You feel me? Historical researcher claims to have verified Roman authorship of the New Testament. His name is Henry Davis. Let me show the book for y'all. Let me show the motherfucking book for y'all, family. This book right here, Creating Christianity, a Weapon of Ancient Rome. I want y'all to do y'all research and studies on the Piso family. Okay? That, that's who made the fucking book. That's who made the fucking book, bro. Okay? Back to it. Now, Hebrew derives from Greek. And if you didn't know, the New Testament, the second part of the Bible is actually written in Greek. So I'm not making this shit up. Next. All right. Now, back to what I was saying earlier. This is the comparison between the two characters. You feel me? Born of the Virgin Isis, born of the Virgin Mary. Birthday is on December 25th. Horus or Heru birthday is also on December 25th. You feel me? You can just look. And actually, I'm going to make this larger so you guys can read it. You feel me? Just look. I'm going to get my fucking face off. Just read. Read it. Y'all see that shit. Y'all see that. You feel me? They just copy paste. They just copy motherfucking paste, dog. Now, on to the next. Examples of the weird shit in the Bible that Greeks practice. Now, ancient Greeks were known for incest, pedophilia, cannibalism, misogyny. We shoot this all throughout the Bible with Isaac being 40 and marrying a 10 year old. Jesus telling niggas to drink his blood, and eat his flesh. And Jacob marrying his first cousin. Abraham also marrying his sister and women being treated like shit. Now, right here, we have a Greek statue of a grown man holding a child in his arms. Now, if you didn't know. The Greeks were pedophiles. Pedophilia was common and normalized in ancient Greece. The Greeks were pedophiles. You feel me? We're not going to get into that, but they were pedophiles. Next. Next slide, nigga. Damn, that shit loading slow as fuck. Now, we have the history of the Bible, and we know who wrote the book. You know the authors. Now, let's start to dive in to what's wrong with the motherfucking book, starting with the motherfucking first chapter of the book, Genesis. 
Now, as we know, they say that uh, God took Adam's rib and made the woman. Now, science disproved this. Now, they say Eve, a.k.a. the woman, came from Adam, the man, but scientifically, Adam would have had to come from Eve. Men or males have XY chromosomes, while women or females have XX chromosomes. The X chromosome is dominant, as Mendel's Law states. You can't get dominant traits from recessive traits, but you can get recessive traits from dominant traits. Okay, so that alone destroys that shit. Now, this is the comparison of the chromosomes. On the left, you have the X chromosome, and on the right, you have the Y chromosome. You feel me? Females have two X's, nigga, and males have one Y and one X. So how the hell could something smaller make something bigger? Uh, the X chromosome is dominant. This is why there's more women on the earth than men. And also why everyone starts off as a female in their mama's womb. Also, a question to pose. Why do you think we have nipples? Okay. Why do you think niggas have nipples? Now, these are scientific receipts to validate my argument. This is how scientists and anthropologists prove that black people were here first using the dominant and recessive argument. Um, and for a, a question that a lot of people ask, well, if women were here first and they only have X chromosomes, even if there was to do parthenogenesis, they will only produce other women. This is not true because the Y chromosome is the X chromosome, just minus 2.8% of its genetic mass. If you draw a letter X on a piece of paper, you feel me? You draw a letter X on a piece of paper and you erase some of it, you're going to get the letter Y. And if you draw the letter Y on a piece of paper and you add some of it, you're going to get the letter X. You feel me? It's just two point. It's just a two point eight percent genetic mass differentiation. Um, but yeah, as we can see here, you know, I got the links. I got the links. But watch, watch what this man say. Yes, if we're speaking anthropology, the black race is the original race. Anthropologists have already agreed that the first man, the oldest man in the world was found in Africa. God bless my black brothers. God bless my motherfucking Mexican brothers. Now, y'all niggas not going to disagree that black people was here first, but how do we know this? How do we scientifically prove this using the dominant and recessive argument? So there is no ways around this, nigga. Damn, yeah, no. What the speaking. fuck? Skip that shit. Okay, back to the Adam and Eve story. <clears throat> all right, so we all know that God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of good and evil because it was bad and they would die. And we know that death nowadays is commonly associated with evil or, you know, something that is bad. But... People don't know when it's death is actually the start of new life. But how did Adam and Eve know if what they were doing was good or bad or good or evil if they have not yet eaten from the tree? That's like telling the baby not to do something because it's bad or you're going to punish them. But the baby don't even know what good or bad is. So basically, to sum it up, he told them not to eat from the tree because it's bad or it's evil, right? But the tree itself has the knowledge of good and evil. So how could they know if what they were doing were good and evil if they have not yet known what good and evil was? Because they didn't know what good and evil was until after they ate from the tree. This is why after they ate from the tree, they got intelligent. The metaphorical reason, uh, uh, the metaphorical meaning behind the tree of knowledge is them coming into consciousness or kept her awakening. You feel me? But we're going to get into that into the Egyptian lecture or the commit lecture. But God also kills an innocent newborn black child for nothing at all in Genesis 38 and 7. Continue. All right. Now, questions to ask or things you should be questioning so far. So if Adam or Eve were black, right, which we can prove by science, if they, you know, would have actually existed, but we know they didn't. If they would have listened to God, would the world be straight? So from that statement alone, you have most holes. Another question is the Bible saying black people ruin the world. Also, is God an abusive or bad parent 
does he have animosity towards black people or is he a good or bad or evil person? Now, this is the facial reconstruction of Adam. We know Adam is a fictitious character, but due to them uh, trying to fabricate the Bible, you know, he would have been a black person. Okay. And since Eve supposedly came from him, Eve would have also been a black woman. Now, uh, these are scriptures I would like to show. Full screen. Full screen. Okay. The God of the Bible is actually Satan. Now, many people blame Lucifer as Satan for all of the evil in the world when God has made it clear time after time that he does all the evil shit. Now, these are scriptures and these are examples that I have listed within the Bible that proves my argument. Proverbs 16 and 4, for example, the Lord has made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. Now, what this is means, God makes everything, even evil people, to do evil shit. Now, we see an example of this in Exodus 10, 20, when he purposely makes Pharaoh's heart harden or he purposely makes Pharaoh do evil shit. You feel me? Just to prove, just to show his power. This is what he called abusive authority. When you purposely manipulate people to do evil shit just for you can destroy them and look like the hero. You feel me? Uh, but, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so he would not let the children of Israel go. Another one is I as I uh, fuck is Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. Jeremiah 25 and 29. For lo, I began to bring evil onto the city, which is called by my name. Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in this city? And the people not be afraid. Should there be evil in the city? And the Lord has not done it. Conclusion. God is evil. He purposely makes people evil and condone evil shit. Hence why actions done in the scripture shown in the next slide are uh, allowed. I did not mean pro to say prohibited, but are allowed. Uh, also, in the book of Job, God commanded Satan or Lucifer to abuse Job. Okay. Now, back on back on the motherfucking screen. I don't know. I don't want that shit. Back on the motherfucking screen, nigga. Hold on, what, what layout I want to go with? Okay. Seven sins of God. You know, people always saying, repent, repent. <clears throat> we are sinners. We don't deserve life. Well, um, God needs to repent because he condones slavery, pedophilia, human sacrifice, incest, misogyny, cannibalism, and also rape. I don't condone any one of these things. I don't support none of this shit. I don't allow none of this shit. And you're telling me to repent? No, nigga, he needs to repent. He, like, get the fuck out here. Human sacrifice. Example, everybody knows the scripture, John 3, 16, for the God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, basically, he sacrificed his son. That's a human sacrifice. Another example of a human sacrifice is in Genesis 22 and 2. Then God says, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. Go to the region of Moria, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, and I will show you. Now, although when dude was about to sacrifice him, he told or some angel told him not to do it, but it's just a principle. Why would you even say some shit like that? You're disgusting. Also, incest in Genesis 20 and 2. Abraham married his sister. Isaac and Rebecca were also first cousins. If you track the biblical genealogy, misogyny, you feel me? They, they really hate women. The Holy Trinity of Kemet was man, woman, and child, with being Isis, Osiris, and Horus. But the, uh, the Holy Trinity of the Bible being three men, three male figures, it's a, a a lack or absence of femininity, the feminine, divine, feminine energy, with their trinity being God, I mean, being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But here are some misogynistic verses. This is why they leave you out. They see you at the bottom of the totem pole. 
1 Corinthians 14 and 35. And if they learn anything, let them ask their husband at home. For it's a shame for a woman to speak in church. I can't even fucking speak in church. I mean, look at this shit. I can't even motherfucking speak in church. Look at this shit. Let your woman keep in silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. You feel me? Look at this shit. Look at the last scripture. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of God is Christ. Which means the women are on the bottom of the totem pole. Also, I highlighted that he gave his only begotten son. Only meaning exclusive or one. But if you read Psalms 2 and 7 and you read all throughout the Bible, we clearly can see that Jesus or Yahweh Shai isn't the only begotten son of God because he calls David his only begotten son. In Psalms 2 and 7, he also calls the children of Israel his son, even his firstborn. And also he calls Adam his son directly. So this is a contradiction I would like to point out as well. Now, biblical receipts to prove my argument. Now, everybody knows about the slave receipts. I mean, the slave scriptures. Obey your earthly masters. I have them highlighted right here. But this is the big guy. This is what a, a, a lot of people don't know about. Now, pedophilia. Yes, he condones pedophilia. One of his biblical prophets, going by the name of Isaac, actually was 40 and married Rebecca when she was 10 years old. And it is written in the book of Jasher. Now, many people will say, well, the book of Jasher isn't in the Bible. Well, the book of Enoch isn't in the Bible. The Apocrypha isn't in the fucking Bible. Yeah, uh, and y'all still take from that, nigga. This is a direct mention of the book of Jasher. In Joshua 10 and 13, you can read it. Uh, also, it, the book of Jasher is directly mentioned in 2 Samuel 1 and 18. It doesn't do this with none of the other books at all. So I went to read the book of Jasher, but... Uh, Joshua 24 and 4, and Rebecca was 10 years old in those days, and Isaac took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and Isaac was 40 years old, he took Rebecca. So, that nigga, like, what the fuck, why, why is you following this book? It condones pedophilia. Pedophucking-philia. You feel me? D -d disgusting. Disgusting. Fucking Disgusting. Y'all, y'all niggas nasty ass bros. Now, more receipts. More receipts, bro. Pull this shit up. Now, cannibalism in John 54. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up in that day. You feel me? Basically, this is Jesus telling niggas to drink his blood and eat his flesh. This is cannibalism. Are you, this is vampire, this is supporting vampires. This is what Europeans do. You clearly can see the European or the Greek influence within this book. Cannibalism was done in Europe a lot. They even fucking went to commit and took the mummies and ate the remains of the mummies. Pedophilia, all up in ancient Greece. You clearly can see pedophilia is present within this book. Present in God condones slavery. You, you slaves obey your slave master scripture. What is your what does Europeans do? Look at the history. Look at the history. Rape. You feel me? Look at this shit. If a man has to meet the virgin who has not pledged to marry and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay her father 50 shackles of silver and marry the young woman. Listen, bro. That's not a good punishment. Cash break that nigga. Also, you can if you go to war, you can take niggas hold. Now, this is y'all niggas logic. This is y'all niggas logic. Now look now look look at look at what look at what Jesus about to say. Look look at what this nigga about to say. He was this fucking layout right here. This is basically the psalm story of Jesus. Hey there, it's Jesus, Jesus H. Christ. My dad's God sent his ghost to impregnate a teenage girl with a God baby, me. Now I'm 100% man, but I'm also 100% God. So I suppose I knocked up my own mother. Ooh, 
And I essentially sacrificed myself to myself, providing the dead body required in my recipe for redemption. To atone for a rib woman's crime of eating magical fruit on the advice of a talking snake. My all-powerful god dad who created the entire universe from nothing in six days, for some reason needed a dead body to correct the mistakes he made making humans. Go figure. And now, eternal torture awaits all who doubt my infinite love. Pretend to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and you too can live forever in the sky. Cheers. Look at that shit. This, it, what, this is what basically sums up the story of the biblical character we call Jesus, or Yeshua, or whatever hey there, terminology you want to use. Jesus. God damn. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh... Now, right here, we see uh, these pecker woods. You have pecker wood one or uno in Spanish. You feel me? I'm a man of many different languages. And you have pecker wood two or dos. You feel me? Telling y'all that this is not your book. You came and you uh, adapted the religion of the slave master. You have been psychologically uh, conquered and influenced by the Caucasian or the Caucasoid, which is the official terminology used in anthropology. Uh, but yes, and this goes for Hebrews and everything. It's not your fucking book. Okay. How the fuck can a black person Shit, claim to be a goddamn Christian? That you ignorant, stupid motherfuckers would be praising the same God of the slave owner. Now you see what he said. Now look at look at this. I just want to read this quote by Chris Rock. If you're black, if you're a black Christian, you have a really short memory. You really do. You feel me? If you don't understand what he means by that, then you you just you just you just mentally ill, nigga. American slaves somehow. American slaves somehow got the religion of the slave masters was beating in their head generation after generation after generation they were tortured terrorized lived in fear constantly and so eventually they had no choice but to believe it and then once they believe it they started spreading it to their children generation after generation after generation until we come to you modern day black american christians and you're still teaching this shit to your other black fellow human beings and i'm sorry to be the one to tell you this but that makes you an uncle Uncle Tom House, nigga. You feel me? Y'all motherfuckers is worshiping white people. And even for the niggas who try to propagate and make Jesus black or Yahweh Shai black. Uh, nigga, everything I just said, this, everything, all the receipts I pulled this far, still disproves this book. Okay? But next. Fuck. Next. Next slide. Okay, 10 extra reasons not to believe in this book. 10 extra reasons. Let's go. Now, reason number one, the letter J was made in 1524, so it wasn't no Jesus, John, Job, Judah, Jerusalem, etc. Second, Jesus was the first age shit. So, you know that the Bible is based off of astrology. You feel me? So when it's talking about Jesus walking on water, it's actually talking about the sun walking on water and with Jesus being the first slave ship, right? This is what it means by Jesus is walking on fucking water. The the first the fucking you see that slave ship walking on motherfucking water? That that's what that shit mean by that nigga. Um it's a book called How to Make a Negro Christian. The KKK, the Ku Klux Klan are actually also um christians just just to let y'all niggas know they they're also motherfucking christians look jesus saves you see you see that shit man y'all worship you worship in the same guy a motherfuckers used to hang your bitch ass now uh let me see no art is no archaeological proof or evidence of none of this happening uh you know the shroud of tumoring has been debunked the Exodus route has also been debunked. You feel me with the split rock? That shit been debunked. Also, the Epora Papyrus has been debunked. All of that has been debunked. You feel me? Read that. There is no archaeological evidence of them niggas existing. 
all of the knowledge of the universe does not reside within one book. It does not reside within one book. You know how slow you have to be and how close-minded you have to be to believe that all the knowledge of the universe and the creation of the universe resides within a single book, which has multiple versions, by the way, which brings me to number seven. Now, many people will say, let's use the King James Version. That's the ver perfect version. Well, King James was a homosexual pedophile who was also into demonology. Yeah, King, King James was a fruit trooper, dog. No, see, I, I just skipped ahead. I just skipped ahead. I don't want to skip ahead. Back. Back. Uh, yeah. King James was a fruit trooper. You feel me? He liked it. Uh, he, 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 uh, what's on that fruity shit? But this is, this is common for Europeans. This is common for cockazoids. You feel me? King James was gay. Uh, also, people use this book to justify the mistreatment of black people. That goes for black Hebrew Israelites, white Jews, etc. It's also copyrighted by the Crown Press and used in Freemasonry lodges. Now, the Crown Press is a company owned by Queen of fucking Elizabeth. And Queen Elizabeth is also a Freemason. You can search this up. You can yeah, pop up. Is Queen Elizabeth a Freemason? Yes, bitch. Um, uh, but okay, next, and the shit ain't moving, could okay, okay, family, we're almost done, anyways. Don't be like these pseudo Israelite niggas. Now, listen, I'm going to do a lecture on them specifically, but after reading all that I told you. And just researching everything that I told you to do, this significantly kills their argument. But we're going to get into the specifics with them talking about, you know, Deuteronomy 28, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai is, is not being a white man, but no actual historical historian agrees with you. Search up the Roman Piso family. I have the fucking book right here explaining how this shit was written by fucking white people who were inspired by black Egyptians. Whole fucking book right there, nigga. You feel me? It all it all began in black Egypt. It all began. Look, you, you see the highlights, nigga. You see the high you see the fucking highlights. You see the highlights. Stop fucking playing. But um basically I would like to leave y'all with this piece of knowledge specifically for them because a lot of the times where people get caught by these Israelite niggas is especially black people. And Latinos is Deuteronomy 28. Now, this is how you easily debunk Deuteronomy 28 uh, by using the scriptures at the bottom. You know, Ezekiel 18, the whole chapter, Deuteronomy 24 and 16, Psalm 49 and 7, and Jeremiah 31 and 30. Now, basically, their argument there tell you we're dying today because of our forefathers' sins and we're cursed because of our forefathers' sins. But these scriptures literally say that no man can die for the sins of another. And it literally uh, says that the son, I mean, the children should not be put to death for the sins of their father. But we're going to get specifically uh, more into them later on. But, um, yeah, uh, that's really it, family. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to doing these lectures. I'm looking forward to. Speaking this motherfucking real ass knowledge to y'all. You feel me? Waking y'all motherfuckers up. Hold on, hold on, I gotta drink my water. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, but lectures coming soon. We're exposing Islam, Quran, Nubians. Uh, we're gonna also gonna speak on the LGBTQ community. We're exposing that whole agenda, all different types of shit. And we also get into ancestral knowledge. But with that being said, wake their break their bitch ass up. 76 awakened, motherfucker.